I know your secret. Oh god, busted. Just start apologizing and crying. No, play it cool. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 deleted scenes from teen movies. What do I want to learn? Why are you asking me? For this list, we'll be looking at teen comedies from the 2000s. If you were a young adult and all coming of age in the aughts, you probably know these films by heart. But just in case, this is your spoiler alert. Tell us which scenes you think should have stayed in the final cut in the comments below. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. Number 10. No Questions High School Musical 2 what time is it? Summertime! The second installment of the franchise picks up from summer vacation, following East High's triumphant junior year. Our favorite Wildcats reunite at Lava Springs Country Club, owned by Ryan and Sharpay's parents. While Troy is trying to make a little cash for the summer, he gets roped into one of Sharpay's schemes. But what's adolescent love without a little jealousy? Gabriella returns the iconic tea necklace and leaves the club. I gotta go my own way. I gotta go my own way. In the end, she comes back to perform with Troy, but without explanation. Until now, in this deleted scene, Taylor brings Gabriella back to the club with no questions allowed. What are you doing here? Don't ask questions, we're leaving. Ugh, is this about Troy? Hey, that's a question. What happened to all your sister's boyfriend rules? Rule number 10, in an emergency, do whatever your best friend tells you to do. Sometimes your bestie really does know best. Number 9. Wrong Bathroom – Aquamarine Be honest, you also wanted blue extensions after watching this movie, didn't you? Jojo, Emma Roberts and Sarah Paxton starred in this story of two friends who find a real-life mermaid. When the girls find out Hayley has to suddenly move, they'll do anything to preserve their friendship like help a mermaid find true love in exchange for a wish. Wait, wait, what? What wish? Oh, you know, if you help a mermaid, you get a wish. Any wish you could wish for. In this deleted scene, Aquamarine marches into the guy's bathroom looking for love. When the girls pull her out, she accuses them of being fish out of water when it comes to males. Have you guys ever been in love before? Well, <laughs> no, not exactly. But what they lack in experience, they make up for in magazine quizzes, as well as tips and tricks for finding the one. When you're that age, where else can you find more relatable advice about relationships than in your favorite issue of Seventeen? We know exactly what we're talking about. Claire's read practically every article about boys ever written, right? Right, and Haley's taken all the quizzes. She's an expert on what guys want. Oh, yeah. Number 8. Allergies. Accepted. Calling all misfits, class is in session. Accepted hilariously explores what could happen if teens were left to their own devices. Yes, but you're overlooking zoning requirements, noise permits, their insurance issues. Come on, insurance? What's gonna happen? Clever slacker Bartleby is too proud to admit that he didn't get into any colleges, so he creates his own. What starts as a cover-up story for his parents turns into a full-blown oasis for those who don't fit in. But not everyone encouraged the chaos. Here we see best friend Schrader try to convince the crew to just walk away. Why? Well, all you have to do is listen to Jonah Hill's in-depth list of his allergies. Papaya, field wheat, Copper, okay, cinnamon, wicker baskets, granite, most crayons, sea salt, pleather, 
Angel food cake. Let's just go, come on. Hill's comedic rant might have been cut short here, but thankfully we get to see more scenes like this from him later in the decade. I was gonna do it, but there was a security breach. You never would have done it. Let's go to the liquor store and watch your stupid ID get rejected. Number seven, I go where the love is, whip it. This funny, moving, and empowering coming-of-age story takes us into the rough and tumble world of Texas roller derby. Excellent as it is, it's interesting to see Hell Scouts coach Razor get a little more development in this deleted scene. As we've seen earlier, the Scouts love their coach, but don't seem to listen to him very much at all. You didn't learn a goddamn thing, did you? What's it gonna take for you guys to pull it together? Understandably sick of being ignored, here Razor has actually walked away from the team. And I will be damned if I'm gonna waste my God-given talent on a bunch of chicks who are too lazy to even show up to practice on time. Bliss works hard to win him back, but for the moment at least, Razor is unmoved. It's nice to see him stand up for himself and the value he brings to the Hell Scouts. I go where the love is. Thankfully, by the end of the movie, it seems like the team has finally realized how much they need him. Hey, just seeing you guys run the plays, I can't tell you how good that makes me feel. Please, are you gonna cry? No, I'm not uh, gonna cry. It's, it's just, it's such a long time coming. Number six, Dunk Tank, She's the Man. This teen rom-com brought Shakespeare into the new millennium. I'd like to say, welcome. Welcome to Illyria. Welcome, 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 welcome to Illyria. Coming off of her success in What a Girl Wants, Amanda Bynes solidified her teen stardom with She's the Man. Loosely based on the Bard's Twelfth Night, the plot follows a girl who wants to prove she's just as good as the boys, so she dresses up as one. Viola, as her twin brother Sebastian, has to juggle soccer mannerisms that are considered masculine and a jerk ex. In this satisfying deleted scene, we see her accomplish all her goals with a slam dunk. At the fair, Justin takes his throne on the dunk tank. By the way, Sebastian, you sound like a girl, dude. Tired of his taunts, Viola buys a couple of tries, but eventually sinks the king by kicking a ball at the target, striker style. But here's the thing, I kick like a boy. Sorry, bro, brother, brethren. That's not fair! Number five, candy girls, stick it. Gritty and rebellious, Stick It is one team flick that stuck with a lot of us. An uncompromising coach has to lead angsty and combative teenage gymnasts to gold. Sounds easy, right? Doris, she's, she's flipping through the air, she's spinning, Doris. While the girls tend to get under each other's skin, this scene shows them banding together to rile up their coach. At a grocery store checkout, Coach Vickerman flirts with the cashier while the girls load the counter with all types of sweets and treats. When Coach tells them to put it all back, they make him out to be the mean daddy. I'm not their daddy. <gasps> then why do you care so much about what they eat? You know what? We're going to get mom to get this for us later. It's a subtle commentary on the dangerous standards gymnasts are held to, while also leaving you with some serious second-hand embarrassments. I'm sorry, girl. I tried. Do I have to call social services? What? Number four, closet surprises. 13 going on 30. I want to be 30! Just let me play you this song, okay? It'll make you feel better. I want to be 30. 30 and flirty and thriving. Grab your razzles. You're going to want to see this. From 13 to 30 overnight, Jenna Rink made us all want to be grown up. I like your shoes. Thanks. I like your dress. It's because they've got these incredible boobs to fill it out. Sure, you have to work for a living and navigate relationships, but you also get to be independent. One extended scene shot for this fantasy rom-com left out a very important aspect of adulthood, the wardrobe. Throughout the film, Jenna wears some iconic outfits. 
But here we get a sneak peek at just how extensive her closet is. From racks of clothes to shoes to makeup and lingerie, her true age is obvious when she picks up her underwear and asks, What am I, a stripper? So scandalous for a teen, but as an adult, this closet is a dream. Number three, standing up for others, Hairspray. Welcome to the 60s. This musical packs a punch while commenting on inequalities of all kinds. From body shaming to economic disparities to racial inequalities, Hairspray tackles it all. Corny, do something! The show is turning to gumbo! Not a chance, Velma. This is the future. While the film takes a pretty clear stance against racism, this deleted scene could have made an even bigger push for solidarity. When Edna finally leaves the house to get Tracy from the protest, she sees her friends of color being loaded into a police van while being told to shut up. Why do you call me, ma'am, and tell them to shut up? Ooh. I think you owe them an apology. What? I believe you heard me. The officer then turns to her and treats her with respect because of the color of her skin. She demands that the donut apologize and happily gets herself arrested. Your call, sweet pea. Edna! 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 Number two, water. Super bad. Adolescence. When one of your biggest problems is how to score booze without your parents finding out. This guy's either going to think, here's another kid with a fake ID, or here's McLovin, the 25-year-old Hawaiian organ donor. Okay, so what's it going to be? Well, Superbad takes you along for that hilarious ride. Along the way, you might run into the law, get hit by a car, or start a fight. But to these guys, it's all worth it to impress their crushes. We couldn't imagine Seth and Evan's night going any differently than it did in the film. But this deleted scene shows a crucial step that may sound familiar, trying to raid your parents' stash. It's okay, we're just, we'll take a bunch of booze and we'll replace whatever we take with water, okay? The boys successfully sneak a bottle out the house, but Evan's brother already beat them to the punch as they find it's just water. That's good. Polluting won't make you happy, Seth. Pick that up. And not just because we're right in front of my house. Tough break, guys. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Nicknames, The Princess Diaries. Mia learns that queens don't need nicknames. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm a motor mouth. And that was my nickname in grammar school, motor mouth. Ah. Uh, what was yours? What? What was your nickname? What did they call you in school? Clarice, my name. A slap to the nose, Freaky Friday. Anna lives up to her bad reputation. Sorry about the test. You know what, Stacy? <sighs> college ending, bring it on. From competition to college teammates. That's why I'm about to be captain of this squad. My ass woman, that job is mine. Please, not when I bring it. No, I'm gonna bring it. Ah, uh, you're gonna bring it right over here. 80s moves, 17 again. It's not a team movie if Zac Efron's not dancing. Jim can't control his bowel movements, American Pie 2. How to turn a group hang into a one-on-one, -on -one 101. You know how he gets. Oh, dude, Wombat's leaving the cave. Let's go, come on. Gotta run, gotta go. Be careful. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, rigging the scales, Mean Girls. This one is so fetch. Gretchen, stop trying to make fetch happen. It's not going to happen. Or Nobby. Arguably one of the most prominent films of the yachts, Mean Girls masterfully captures the insanity of high school and its cliques. 
while new girl Katie tries to break into popularity by joining the Plastics. Her not-so-glamorous friend tries to plot Regina George's downfall. In the film, they target Regina's body image. In this scene, their scheme is taken a step further, when Katie rigs Regina's scale to trick her into thinking she hasn't gained a pound. Damien gives her the idea, which he learned at camp. If, if you pop the top off the scale and you take some dental floss, you can rig it so it always stays the same way. This shows the viewer just how conniving the trio can be, and we also almost got another slang term to try and make happen. And Gretchen wants to curl your hair. It's gonna look so knobby. Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure to check out the music video for it right here.